All right, in this video, I want to talk uh, briefly about how I use Docker uh, in development and how I move from Docker in development to Docker in production on small projects. So I'm not going to be using Swarm or uh, doing a big distributed applica application. Uh, I'm just going to be showing you how I use Docker Compose files to work in development and then a different Docker Compose file to work in production and um, makes a really simple workflow because really that's the beauty of Docker is that I can use the same Docker file um, in both places and I don't have to worry about uh, the dependencies you know getting getting weird or anything so here's what I've got I've got an index.html file in my source directory and this could be an app it could be whatever and then um, in my uh, docker file I am simply bringing in uh, nginx image and I am copying over that source directory into that um, um, the nginx uh, html directory so that it will serve it and then in my docker compose file I am uh, exposing uh, a port and I'm gonna go ahead and change this I'm gonna do 8080 so I'm going to expose port 8080 to port 80, uh, uh, the external port of port 8080 to the internal port of port 80 on the uh, Nginx container. And I'm going to uh, tell this Docker Compose file to build from my uh, local Docker file. And I do that by using build and uh, using the dot. And I could actually... Uh, change this to a file path of a different docker file different name or whatever and use that but I'm gonna use a single docker file here because it's easy and um, tell it what I want the name of the image to be and now uh, I'm going to specify a volume and I'm gonna override uh, this copy that we did over here where we copied the source directory into the HTML directory I'm going to override that and I'm going to ins instead map it as a volume this way, in produ or in development, I can make changes on the fly without having to rebuild my container. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to run this Docker Compose file, and I like to use the standard Docker Compose file for development so that it makes the commands real easy. I don't have to uh, type out a new uh, file name. So I just go... Um, I can just do Docker Compose up... Uh, and if I want to rebuild the image, I can append dash dash build to the end of it. Um, so I'm going to run this, and it's going to build that image, and it's going to uh, expose port 8080, and um, it should be good here. So let's go over and check that out in a browser. So I actually got it up over here already. I'm going to refresh that, um, and so here is my uh, application running. I can go over here because of those that volume mapping. I can go over and change this to let's say hello, and then when I go back and refresh that, it's live. So that's really nice for in development. Now when I move to production. I don't want that volume mapping, so I'm going to create a second Docker Compose file. Uh, I like to name it Docker Compose prod, and um, I've just basically this is the same as the other one, and of course yours could be different. For example, in in uh, your Docker Compose file in your in your development file, you could have um, let's say this was a PHP application, and I wanted PHP uh, my admin for doing some SQL stuff in here. I could totally have that as, as a, a service down here that runs in development but not in production. And so basically you've got one Docker file and you're composing it different ways. So over here in production, uh, the production file I've just omitted the um, I've just omitted the volume mapping so that uh, it does not override uh, where we copy the source file into the HTML directory. So let's run that and see the difference in this case. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead, instead of mapping it to 8080, I'm going to map it to 80. I'm going to do uh, Docker, Compose, um, Docker Compose down. And there 
it goes down, and then I'm going to do Docker Compose up. Uh, but this time, I'm going to tell it to use the production file, and I'm going to do that by using the F flag, and I just say, and that's going to tell it to use the production file. I'm going to run that. We'll rebuild the container. Now, this one's no longer running on 8080. Instead, just running on 80. And boom, there it is. Now this time, because we're not overriding that with a volume mapping, everything's baked in in that uh, image, uh, I could do a uh, Docker machine into my server, just do Docker Compose up on that production, and boom, we're in business. So if I were to change this, let's say I just remove hello and go back, those changes will not carry over in real time because it's all baked into the file. So anyway, just a real simple tip there. You guys have a great day. If you want to uh, uh, learn a little bit more about me and what I do, you can head over to calebrewer.com or follow me on Twitter at Caleb Brewer. See ya.